In this Bonsai 3D tutorial, we will cover the suite of tools containing primitives. Each of these classical shapes is generated with a few clicks of the mouse, and we shall draw one of each using the default settings. It takes three clicks to draw a cube. One, two, three. And it also takes three clicks to draw a cone. And a cylinder. You draw a sphere with two clicks. You again need three clicks to draw a torus or a donut. Next, let's take a look at the options for these shapes starting with the cube. Selecting the cube icon displays its tool options palette. Note that at the top there are three icons and the middle one is selected by default. This is the one we used when we generated the cube a moment ago. Select the first icon on the left and then type 10 feet in the fields under dimensions. Actually, if you check the little box on the right of the fields, you only need to type 10 feet once, as all the fields are locked at the same value. Click once in the project window, and a 10 feet by 10 feet by 10 feet cube appears where you clicked. The third icon in the tool options palette is called axial, whereas the previous two options generate cubes with sides parallel to the x and y axis, axial allows you to determine the angle that your cube is positioned on the reference plane. This option takes four clicks. The first click establishes the first corner point. The second click establishes a second corner point, which can be at any angle relative to the x and y axis. The third click sets the width of the rectangle, and the fourth click the height of the cube. As soon as the cube is generated, we still have the option to graphically adjust its parameters through yellow arrow controls that are displayed with the object. A single click on any one of these arrows allows you to change the dimensions of the shape in that direction. Notice that as we move the arrows, the information displayed in the tool options palette also changes. We can actually type values directly in the numeric fields and our object will change accordingly. In this example, we enter 10 feet for the cube width, 15 feet for its depth, and 20 feet for the height. Observe how the cube changes. Next we select the cone tool and observe its tool options palette. And you can see that it has more options in the cube. Again the second icon is the default option which we used earlier. The first or the leftmost icon is the preset option and it generates cones with one click using the values and the dimensions fields. The third option, called Diameter, requires three clicks. The first two position the diameter of the circular base, and the third click the height of the cone. The fourth icon, called Three Point Cone, requires four clicks. The first three clicks define three points of the circular base of the cone, and the last click sets the height of the cone. The last or the fifth icon represents a drawing method that allows you to generate an elliptical shape for the base of the cone. Now it requires three clicks, the first two of which define the large and small diagonals of the elliptical base. The last click once again defines the height of the elliptical cone. The cone tool allows you to also generate truncated cones. You can do this by checking the truncated cone box inside the tool options palette. All the drawing methods apply except that they all need one additional click. Now when generating a truncated cone after the height is defined, a cylinder remains rubber banded and the motion of the mouse affects the size of the top circular face. It can be made larger or smaller than the base. A final click frees the size of the top face and generates the truncated cone. Now as soon as the cone is generated, additional options appear at the lower end of the tool options palette. Recall that you can grab some of the control arrows displayed on the cone to open it up and make it a partial cone. When you do this, the three icons at the bottom of the tool options palette determine what type of an object will be generated, whether it's a surface or a solid, and of what shape. Here are the three options. Note that there are also two fields labeled start and end. They reflect the values and degrees of the starting and ending points of the partial cones. The cone can also be edited by typing values directly into those fields. The third shape in the primitive suite is the cylinder tool. Once the cylinder tool is selected, observe its options in the tool options palette. 
As with the cone in the previous example, five options to generate a cylinder exist in the palette. In fact, these five variations bear names identical to those for the cone. First, we have the preset option, then radius, which is the default option, diameter, three points, and finally, ellipse. We already illustrated the default radius drawing option method. We'll do one more example here and let you try the rest yourselves. Pick the last icon on the right, labeled ellipse, and with three clicks, generate an ellipsoid cylinder. Then pick one of the arrow controls and open it up. Then click on the leftmost option of the closure icons to transform it into a surface. Again, try the remaining options on your own. The fourth shape in the primitive suite of tools is a sphere. Options shown in the tool options palette are slightly different to those for the shapes in the previous examples. There are six icons instead of five, and the first is preset, and the sphere is generated with a single click. The second and third icons, radius and diameter respectively, require only two clicks to generate spheres. For example, with the radius option selected, which is the default option, we click in the project window to establish the center point for the sphere, and then make a second and final click to determine the radius for the sphere. While the closure option icons are similar to what we've already seen, there are additional numerical fields toward the bottom of the tool options palette. As their names imply, the start and end angle fields in the horizontal category can be used to establish closure to the sphere horizontally, as do the start and end angle arrows visible on the shape. Also available is the option to determine closure to the sphere vertically through the corresponding numeric fields and arrows. The next two icons in the tool options palette, three points in elliptical, generate different types of spheres. We shall let you try them on your own. And the final option in the palette is four points and its generation method is pretty self-explanatory, relying on four clicks to generate the sphere. Torus is the fifth shape in the primitive suite of tools. Select it and observe its options in the Tool Options palette. There are five methods of generating toruses, a couple of which we will explore here. The second icon, Radius, is the default option. With the torus tool active and the Radius option selected, click anywhere in the project window. This establishes the center point for the torus. The second click defines the radius and thus the size of the donut. The third and final click defines the radius of the circle that is swept along the larger circle. Closure options for the torus appear in the tool options palette once the final click is made. Observe that they are similar to those available for the sphere in the previous example. The ellipse method is the final icon in the tool options palette. Select it and click anywhere in the project window. The first click establishes the center point for the torus and the second defines the radius point. If we take a look at the action palette, our next click defines the minor radius X point, then the fourth and final click defines the minor radius Z point. The sixth and final tool in the primitive suite is the spherical object tool. Once we select it, observe its options in the tool options palette, and you will notice options identical to the sphere tool shown previously. However, you will notice different options in the bottom half of the palette. Located within the shape pop-up menu are eight different types of spherical objects. Geodesic is the default option and with it draw a sphere as we have done so previously. Observe the result. Because the sphere is still in edit mode, we can experiment with the remaining spherical shapes from the pop-up menu. Select icosahedron from the tool options palette and observe the result. Then select soccer ball, octahedron, and revolved sphere to illustrate a few. You may try the remaining spherical shapes by yourself. And this concludes our Bonsai 3D Primitives tutorial.